Welcome to the Data Coffee Break podcast. I'm Mark and I'm Christian. If you are passionate about data like us, take a seat, relax, and join us to our coffee break where we discuss all things data. And remember, there are no filters, no PR. It's just a real life experience. So let's begin. Welcome back, Christian. How are you doing? I see you've been uh, putting a fancy new equipment on your microphone. What is that? I know. I think it's called the anti implode. Not sure if um, that's going to make a, a big of a difference. It's going to um, smooth your voice. Uh, most exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so also quick mention, we know that uh, the last few weeks have been pretty much bumpy for, for a lot of people in in the industry, in particular software vendors. So we just want to share our empathy with anyone who might have been impacted or anyone uh, who feel maybe a, a bit uncomfortable at the, uh, the moment with that. So 100% our empathy is with you. And... This is a, a personal way to, to see things. I mean, remember that there are three main things that no one can take away from you, which is your skills, your network, and your purpose. This is your mantra. This is your way. Yeah. That's <laughs> your, your own one. way to go forward. <laughs> exactly. That's great. So let's get started on today's episode. Uh, we're going to speak about data products, um, but also... You can hear sometimes uh, data as a product. So we're going to try to demystify those words, help you to understand why it's important, how you can leverage that in your organization. I guess f first question maybe is for you, what is data product? Uh, data product? Yeah, I mean, like, what is the difference, <laughs> right? We hear, we hear all yeah, the time, what's data the product, data as a product. I mean, uh, I, there, there is a, a very good blog post in... Uh, in Towards Data Science by Javier Gumara. He talks about the differences between those two terms. And I, I really like how it was outlined. I mean, talking about a data product as anything that can actually produce data, anything from a data warehouse, uh, okay, uh, an API, uh, yeah. a self-driving car, you know, anything that's, that you can actually materialize and get data out of it is just a product, right? Whereas data as a product, is that the result of applying this product thinking into a, a proper data set, right? So when you already make something tangible out of those data, uh, data was produced. Yeah, I think you, you came with an interesting keyword, a product thinking. A couple of years ago, I really didn't understood what, what it was, like what was the meaning of it. I understand product thinking as, or to answer, uh, let's say, a business requirement user requirement if it's more like a let's say b2c or in some extent and how to create a product around it to solve the business issues the uh, end user issue i don't know if if you see it like that and to the extent this is the same idea that we apply mm -hmm. a data set with a data product yeah it's this uh, concept of uh, treating your data as if you were going to consume a product, right? So instead of just delivering a one-off usage from data, you know, it's, it's, mm. it's about focusing on the people side as well as the process, right? That is really important, which is what you touched on that. What are examples you, you might have in mind? The examples of it could be from something from as simple as a table or view that is exposed with a semantic layer or, as you mentioned, as these third-party data sets that we can ask, even with Alex Loco, with alternative data, when he talks about the, the data that he receives, you know, those data sets. For example, in some aspects, government data were updated regularly. Uh, public transport organizations are become are basically quite good when it comes to uh, to those data yeah, data as a product as well. Yeah. So I think those are great examples. Another one, I mean it's much more advanced, but it's still very true. If you think about APIs such as with Google Map, Google Map API, for example. You get APIs as well from CRM systems. Yeah, here in the UK, I think we've been both through the process, the land registry website, which is basically helping you to search the value of properties in your area when they've been sold, etc. All of those are examples of data as a product, basically. Yes. Actually, Mark, what makes 
uh, data a product? What are the key characteristics of it? Yeah, so we have mostly, let's say, five key characteristics when it comes to data as a product. Discoverability, quality, observability, addressable or operationability, and security. So if we go more in detail in each of them, so discoverability, one factor is making sure that what you offer to your client or what you offer to internal stakeholders, because it can be internal consumers, can be easily accessible. Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, it's, it's accessible, but also it's, I'm going to say, findable, right? Because nowadays we have infinite data lakes or such a big amount of data that it's growing every single day, and then people don't know what data do I have, right? The data consumers, mm. uh, they don't even understand or realize what data do we have? The fact that you can discover your data, that is such a, uh, that's, maybe that's why the first one, right? It's fundamental. I mean, I see that as when we say discoverability, there is a technical aspect of it, of providing access through different tools. So if it's for internal use, like we hear a lot about cataloging tools, but I feel now yeah. there is actually so much variety in terms of like saying, all this can be discoverable for people because it could be like on data word website, for example, or it can be like through search engine, like we have open source data, which is basically providing data as a product as well, because it's supposed to be updated regularly, <laughs> it <laughs> depends on some of them. Uh, but uh, that's the same aspect here. Out of all of that, in, in the actual, you raised a really good point, right? So data cataloging. As a solution, mm -hmm. it uh, seems like the natural solution to associate. Uh, but I, I would say that nowadays, yes, having a data dictionary, data cataloging of our data is a must, but understanding the lineage of this data, because as you mentioned, right, so where is the data being produced from or what are the different stages that it has gone through? Like, for example, if this data is coming from third parties and Combined yeah. with internal ones. That is really important, which is part of the discoverability piece. I mean, that's an uh, entire topic when you speak about a uh, lineage, like with a yeah. DAG. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that maybe we can do a, an episode on that as well. Uh, what's the next one? You want to take it? Yes, quality. Coming back to what we discussed about, treat your data as a product that you will consume. That means that uh, in order to be considered a uh, product, your data should go through all the stages of quality, right? And again, here we can go um, <laughs> for entire episodes about what data quality means, right? Is it like a completeness of data, mm -hmm. cleanness of the data? But definitely the quality is, is such a big topic now. Yeah, the, I mean, the simple fact of yourself, you access a data set and you see quite important mistake in the data set or some missing information, for example, you're never going to use it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so making sure it's being done correctly upfront is so important. It's basically creating the trust in, in some aspect. I guess it's very much linked to the next point, like observability slash trustworthiness yeah. uh, of the data. Um, you want to trust the data set. You want to trust that you can rely on this one for, for the long term as well. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a really interesting concept there, the one that you have, because you mentioned discoverability and quality, right? So mm. those are pretty much aligned to governance, cataloging, you know, so the fact that you have data that can be discovered, that's great. Quality, for sure, right? So those, in my, in my mind, is kind of like the, the principle of governance, but observability is kind of... Uh, Something interesting, because as you mentioned, you want data to be trustworthy. So the data, the, there is a lot of um, friction sometimes exactly. with, between yeah. data producers and data consumers that says, I don't trust your data. That to me is interesting that we are putting a, a label there that to be a data as a product, uh, or to be considered a product needs to be trustworthy. I think those three that we just discussed are really around what you would expect from your data in terms of uh, governance, in terms of... Uh, the way that is delivered, but address, uh, addressability or operationability, which is number four, is one thing that we should never lose our focus on, which is why are we doing this data, right? Sometimes we see a uh, great data sets, but there is no real need of it, right? There is no use case. There is nothing about it. It's, it's, it's just data, right? So um, yeah, a business need, a user need. That brings value uh, as kind of analytics. G going back very quickly on the observability, 
So when we speak about softwares, there is a concept of um, SLA, service Lego level agreement. There is a concept of, if you go a bit more technical, like the number of nines. So to which degree the, the service is accessible? So if it's 2.9, it's 99% of the time. If it's 3.9, it's 99.9% of the time. And you can cal- calculate throughout the year, like that means how many hours or minutes you don't access to the data. And that's also part of it. When you expect in terms of like using data as a product, you want it to have a certain level of service, a certain level of uh, availability in, in this data as well. There is this... Um concept of when data breaks yeah <laughs> when, when you come back and after the weekend and you realize that the latest data hasn't been refreshed <laughs> or or not even after the weekend right after whenever you're expecting it right so that's really important massive fr- frustration <laughs> i know <laughs> i try to to see the equivalent um i mean we all experience uh not being able to access a website we we like and you just feel so frustrated so in a business situation like Ah, oh, I was expecting to, I mean, maybe to make a decision with, with the data and you, you, the data end up not being refreshed, end up uh, the service where you access this data is not being accessible. So you end up being in a pretty uncomfortable situation in a business environment if you cannot make this decision. Yeah, exactly. And I think we haven't touched on the last one, but the last one is security, which should be a given. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, security has so many layers. Right, in terms of data, not only how you access it, who can access it, and what can yeah. you do once you have access to the data. Quick one if you are enjoying this episode and our show, please make sure you follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Links on the description as per usual. Also, if you'd like to grow this community with us, think about sharing this episode with a friend or a colleague interested about all things data. Now, back to the episode. So if we put these five key characteristics together, we know that this is a container of data that directly solves a business problem or is monetized. Basically, they can be used for internal or external uh, purposes. I don't know if I want to put it, I don't know what you think, maybe you will challenge me here, but do you think that the dashboards that you have on your banking app, is that data as a product? I like because when I mentioned banking up a couple of months ago, no, it's always coming back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would argue so because it helps to make some budget decision as a person. I don't know. That's a good question. It can be a, no, I would, I would, I would, I would put it as a date, uh, uh, data as a product. How much I spend this weekend on uh, going out or uh, restaurants. <laughs> yeah. Spend, you know, your spend data. But a uh, question, why, why do we need data as a product? I mean, data products make sense in the sense that it's any kind of application generating data or leveraging data in some aspects. Um, but why is it such a hot topic now <laughs> to have data as a product? Especially if you ask me, because back in the late 90s or early 2000s, early 2000s when I started working, I mean, we used to produce something that was called a data mart. The data mart was a functional subset of your data warehouse following the approach of Kimball. But you, one may argue, like, what? why is it different? Like, why, why is now such a hot topic again? The important thing to, to see is that if you start treating your data as something that you would consume, that is more of an organizational change, right? So it's more of a, of a methodology. It's more, you know, and that's, I think that's why it's a, it's a hot topic. One of the things that I find interesting is that because I was talking about what we were doing since more than 20 years ago, and you still find the situation where people don't trust their data. Yeah. They came to the realization, one, that what they've been doing at the moment is not scalable and potentially is that there is value on it in the sense this could be monetized for the organization to open new revenue streams. But, I mean, they're struggling on this side. Like Gartner was surveying data and analytics leaders and they found that 72% of data and analytics leaders who are heavily involved in leading digital business initiatives, and I was reading that sentence here, those 72% are unsure or to build trusted data foundation that is needed to accelerate their effort to achieve different business goals. In a nutshell, why data as a product allows businesses to make better decisions. Better decisions, 
monetize. Correct. Also, they recognize that it requires individuals who are dedicated to this kind of part of the business, business units. And those individuals are not just like saying, okay, let me prepare the data from the data mart as you were explaining before. But it's more like a holistic perspective. Those individuals are more connected to all mm-hmm. the part of the organization. This is kind of like the social aspect of data as a product as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's technology. Yes, there are technologies that help on that, but there is a big social and cultural aspect on, on the ways of operating. I guess that leads us to introduce data mesh, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the, the elephant in the room. Yeah, exactly. Like how, so how do we get started with, with data as a product? So how, if I would like to get into this. And I know that, that, that you also are a fan of the, of the book of uh, Samak mm-hmm. Degani, the data mesh delivering. We will bring someone to talk about data mesh in practice. It's because again, it's a, one of the, it was one of the trends in, in our episodes of with Ivan. My point of view is on, on what we were just talking about, the characteristics, the why is that a lot of the development, software development practices are going into data. Development is like development from software development. Yes, software development. So so all this concept of DevOps, now we are actually going into data ops. It's like proven methodology trying to be replicated. Yes, exactly. I'm not saying that by all means, I'm not saying that data mesh is data ops. Of course, I'm not saying any of that. But I really see this trend now that um, wrapping data as a product made not necessarily equal data mesh, but is highly interconnected and it's all about an operational model, right? I guess what I'm trying to mention with, yeah. with DevOps, DevOps is not, it's not a technology, right? It's a way that you operate. It's a methodology, right? So now it's, we are trying to bring all these lessons learned now into data fields with data mesh. Yeah, and I guess we see the, the success of that with DBT because... It's becoming pretty much the gold standard when it comes to data transformation because it relies and apply the same methodology that you will find in software development, which is basically using Git uh, to commit a change on your data pipeline, for example. Yeah. So if you think about what data mesh suggests, right, which is to your point about the data pipelines, traditionally, those mm-hmm. data pipelines happen on a centralized function with a data team. The data team that might be quite uh, detached from the consumers. So you have a central function, which is quite monolithic, and it's, you know, doing all things, create uh, data producing to a more distributed approach. It's detached from the business units. Exactly. Yeah. So so now we have data practitioners within the different business units and in a more decentralized approach, more like a federated or, or decentralized, that's. A good way to how to get started with data as a product, definitely getting involved with, with the data mesh approach. What else do you think uh, our listeners can do to get started with data as a product? Yeah, that's a good question. I guess it will be, in my point of view, it's always good to start small first <laughs> because that helps you to help to do trial and error and improve on that. Because this is the undi- entire idea of data mesh in some uh, aspect, like a uh, where you have the social aspect and you, you have a center of excellence and you distribute and you educate with the, what are the, the good habits, the, the best approach to work together. We will bring someone speaking about data mesh because maybe I'm uh, usually paraphrasing here and, and the person will say like, no, <laughs> what you're saying is wrong. So start small. Try to look for a business need where the data that you already have in-house or maybe mixing with external data can, can answer this business need and create the different steps, but also write down what are the different steps because what is going to be important is being able to reproduce that. Reproducing is like by you, by all the people, but it also means that you're going to use different tools because you also want to start to standardize tools and create guidelines uh, around those tools in this case. And what is going to be interesting is like you're going to have those different steps, repeatable steps, and you're going to create this data. Yeah. The mo- most yeah. important thing is you don't want to end up having, okay, I generated this data set and that's it. It's going to answer this business need, this consumer need. The entire idea is to be linked to the uh, five key characteristics, uh, so trust, security, etc. So try to uh, make sure that you 
address each of them and make sure that this data product you're creating is going to be sustainable in a in the long term, in like in three months, six months, two years time. Uh, that will be my long answer to your question. <laughs> I don't know if you have <laughs> something shorter or something. Uh, no, it's, uh, I think I, I think you nailed that part. We work with organizations that are going through this process as well. Because as, as you said, this is a hot topic, right? So we see more and more data teams mm -hmm. adopting this approach, not only because they want to monetize, but also because the way to actually better work with their business needs. And it always starts with a pain point. Commonly, it, it is all around, like, I don't know what data do I have? That's why I would add understanding what data do you have. And I think um, takeaway for this episode, if you look at all this powerful data products is that they are all used to create value for businesses and people. If we would like to apply the principles of these data products and also align to the key metrics, by understanding the data that you have, you can make better decisions on how you allocate resources, how to improve products and services, and even how you can target customers more effectively. Thanks, Christian, for those great insights. That's the end on our side. Well, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Mark. See you, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode. This podcast represents our views and not the ones of our employers. Our mission at the Data Coffee Break podcast is to inform you and help you grow in this always changing data field. Follow us and get into the conversation with the community on our LinkedIn page and Instagram. See you next Tuesday. And until then, keep your data caffeinated. <laughs>